What's going on, everyone? I'm Travis Brown with the Eagle here with Alex Miller of the Eagle and Robert Cessna of the Eagle as well. Uh, but our special guest today is Michael Casagrande of AL.com. He covers the Crimson Tide, who will be heading into Kyle Field this weekend to face the Aggies. Michael, how's it going? Uh, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, uh, what are some of the, the key storylines and things you're looking forward to uh, in this game? Yeah, no, it's it's uh, kind of one of those games that I think before the season was one that was circled by a lot of people. And um, clearly CBS thought it was a big deal to make it their primetime uh, Saturday night game. Uh, I think some of those two two losses, obviously, from A&M the, the previous two weeks kind of take a little bit of the luster away from this one. Um, but it's still it's it's a night game. College Station, Kyle Field's going to be loud. It's going to be rocking. Alabama had trouble with the uh, crowd noise and their, their first and only road, true road game of the season this year at Florida. So, um, you know, it, it seems like they normally, they, they don't normally play that well. They haven't lost in uh, college station, but they haven't played very well in a lot of those games, it feels like. So um, you never know what's going to happen there. Yeah, I know. Uh, like Cease was saying before we started, we were arguing some analytics. I was looking at some of the the deeper numbers in in Alabama's offense, and it seems like, and uh, you from, from the naked eye could be different, but it seems like a lot of what Alabama's success has been in is just in the home run plays, the explosive plays. And in fact, they've been a, a little bit more average than maybe the last couple of years. Is that what, what you've seen is that the home run play is, is their biggest threat? It seems like this year they've kind of been down on the home run. They've, they've had maybe two, the, the one in the Miami game, one in the Southern Miss game, the two big passing plays to Jamison Williams, but those are really the only two big, huge chunk plays they've had all year. I think 41 yards is the next biggest play. And that was on a screen, you know, tunnel screen that John Mechie turned up field. So they really haven't been hitting many of those home run balls um, in the running or passing game. Had a few bigger plays against Southern Miss, but in the, the Ole Miss game, they, the longest run was 21 yards. So I think there are more, it's more nibbling than taking big bites like they had. Um, and that's, I just wrote about that this morning. It's just kind of it's what you'd expect to see what happens when when you lose a first round quarterback, two first round top 10 receivers. Um, it, it was going to take a step back regardless of how much talent they had stock stockpiled um, in recruiting that it wasn't going to be necessarily just a straight continuation of what they did last year. So I remember the A&M game, there was a 94 yard touchdown pass to Jalen Waddle. Um, so if there's been less of that this year and more um, methodical, if you want to call it that, um, drives from Alabama offense. Hey, Michael, I'm kind of interested because once, you know, you get to the weight quarters of rider, you finally start really zeroing in the other team. You, you know, you see a little bit of, of Alabama and highlights, a few games that you're able to watch. Everyone's talking about Georgia's defense. But I was kind of amazed last night. I started looking at the numbers. It, uh, it's been hard for opponents to run against Alabama. The total defense is good. And I don't know if that's because – and I know Florida can put up yards. Uh, Ole Miss supposedly could. So I don't know about the other team's running ability and things like that. But a few years ago, Nick was upset at his defense. And, of course, they've improved. Where, where's this defense ranked to the last couple of defense? And are those numbers kind of accurate that this is a pretty darn good defensive team? Yeah, it's kind of hot and cold. Um, it kind of depends on the moment. Um, if you were to ask Alabama fans two weeks ago, uh, coming out of the Florida game, this was one of the worst defenses they've ever seen. They were, they were it, the sky was falling um, because they gave up. You know, and the, the yardage was was higher than it, this was supposed to be a much improved Alabama defense. And I think people were starting to feel like they maybe were deceived that it wasn't going to be as improved after they lost only a few players from last year's team that had its ups and downs and was a young defense. But, um, yeah, the the running – the average rush at Florida they allowed was the largest they've given up since the 2014 season when they played Ohio State in that Sugar Bowl semifinal. So um, – but they improved – it was a mass improvement against uh, Ole Miss team that, that was one of the top rushing teams in the country, top offensive, you know, yardage-wise offense and a small sample size. And they played three games before that, and two of them were – you know, an FCS and a non-power five. So, you know, some of the numbers could be skewed, but much improved. Um, the running game was non-existent for Ole Miss, lowest rushing total in a few years for them. Um, so, yeah, I think there was improvement. I still, you know, Alabama fans, the, 
something or any fan is going to find some reason to complain about something. And Pete Golding, the defensive coordinator has been a favorite for whatever reason, uh, person to complain about. Um, but I, I think you, you saw some real improvement from them definitely in that first half to how shut out Ole Miss a year after giving up 48 points to them. Michael, I think you touched on when you came at the outset about, you know, I always look, where does teams play other teams in their schedule? And you touched on the 17 game here at Alabama came in or didn't really play well at all. And, you know, if a and makes a couple plays, maybe they could have got humongous, in, uh, you know, upset. But, you know, you look at this schedule, and I, and I would think that, you know, Alabama fans and uh, Nick really wanted to put it on Ole Miss, Kiffin, and all that. But, you know, you know, Jimbo talked about beating his ass in, in the offseason, and now, of course, that hasn't come to fruition. a ms three and two, and they're kind of reeling. Uh, I think, you know, Alabama's proven themselves playing Miami, playing Florida, playing Ole Miss, playing, playing, you know, playing some teams that, you know, you had to worry about. Where does this come? Does this come on a good place, the schedule for AM where they might not get Alabama's best shot? Because, you know, every year it seems like Alabama maybe has one or two games where they just don't play that well. What, what about that situation of where they catch AM? How much, what are they playing for, in other words? Yeah, no, it's a good point because it was clearly a game that was scheduled, uh, circled in the preseason that, you know, AM number six, I think, preseason that it was going to be. You know, Jimbo's comments, there was probably going to be a lot more talk. And it really, it's it's not, you know, there isn't a whole lot of buzz about this game around around these parts. Uh, you know, I think the Ole Miss game was so much talked about. as So, you know, a lot of attention placed on that for probably the two weeks leading into it, even though they had a game before that and Ole Miss had a bye. But, yeah, I mean, there are probably worse times to catch them coming off uh, an emotional win like that uh, of, a statement that they wanted to make uh, from what, you know, they beat Ole Miss last year by 15, but it, it you know, so many people, it felt like a loss. So it, it almost in a way it was like avenging a win last year. So um, in that sense, there might be some, some letdown and, you know, a night game on the road, these teams always talk about hating to have to wait around all day. Um, that's always, you know, especially on the road, that's, that's a factor. Um, so you know, I think there are worse circumstances if you're Texas A&M in terms of Alabama's mindset, what they're coming off of. Um, uh, they played four quarters. Uh, Brian Robinson was, you know, the, the leading rusher took the final snap of the game. So it wasn't like they were they were resting people uh, towards the end of that game. With uh, with all the buzz that went around uh, Bryce Young and what he was able to uh, to do NIL wise beginning in the season and then stepping without having even played a snap, how have you seen him adjust to the the, the spotlight and what has been uh, your take on what he's been able to do, uh, especially being in Heisman conversation, and everything but thing like that as well. Yeah, no, he's uh, it's fair to say he's lived up to the hype. Um, not the biggest guy out there, a little bit different game, not a much different game from from uh, from Mac Jones and and from Tua uh, before him he's a good he's a he wants to pass he's he can run but he's he's a guy who will create with his feet um, I want to say he's Manziel he's got a little bit Manziel in him where he'll he likes to uh, make moves in the backfield he, he kind of he'll see a free rusher he'll see him in the corner of his eye wait till he gets you know two steps away from him put some sort of move on him and make him look stupid, make him run past. But he's, he's looking to, to throw out of those moments where I think around here there's been some frustration among fans where they've seen he's had a clear lane to run for a first down and choose to throw, throw it instead of running it. Um, but other than, you know, there, there, there are few complaints if, if people can complain about his game in the first five games as a starter. It's really being nitpicky. Uh, probably only throwing one truly bad ball that was intercepted in the Ole Miss game. But – Smart with the ball, composed, doesn't seem to get shaken or rattled by the moment at Florida when it was as loud as you could imagine in one of the latter environments. He never he never looked to be – it never looked over his head, and um, he they got points every time they needed him. So um, doing a good job. He's the five-star guy that they thought he was going to be. You know, Travis touched on what, what about the, you're the number one team? How has name, image, and likeness? I mean, when, when uh, you know, dropped that bomb about he's getting close to a million dollars or whatever, first thing I'm thinking, like, man, how does that affect the rest of the team? And, and I guess you would think that Alabama players might have some un, 
you know, have a lot of chances to make money off the field. Has that been pretty quiet and gone well from you guys on the outside looking in? Yeah, it doesn't, hasn't shown any sort of, um, nothing externally has, has shown any sort of impact on that. Um, there are other guys who are um, probably not making, not making as much as he reportedly is, but they're, you know, there are guys who are able to, to make some of that extra income that, that was promised. And, you know, I don't see anybody um, ignoring Bryce Young on the field after any moments or during the plant, you know, I, I think there are always these kinds of situations, whether it was money or whatever, where some people are going to get a little bit more than the others. So. Uh, come, come out of your, your guys' press conference yesterday about the, the limited scholarship running backs available. So moving forward, as you mentioned, Robinson's out there taking the last snap of the game. Uh, you know, and I, Missouri was set, Ole Miss was centered on him, couldn't do anything. Moving forward, how does that look and how does that running back position look for Saturday's game? Yeah, no, losing Jason McClellan, he was the number two, the clear number two guy who was getting quite a bit of action, you know, coming in the second, third series of games uh, to to give Brian Robinson a break. Um, it was pretty big in the passing game. Uh, nine receptions, three of them were touchdowns. Um, he was a real good safety valve for Bryce Young on a few of those plays. Um, I think all three of those touchdowns were, were check downs uh, that McClellan took to the outside and and scored so he's uh he's a big loss for sure um they've got Roy Dell Williams will be the number two guy um coming behind Brian Robinson and behind him is Trey Sanders um former number one running back five star um there's still some questions uh I think from the outside of to how well he's healed he he was in a pretty decent car wreck last year about this time uh, broke his hip. There was hip surgery, um, some pretty serious stuff. Um, curious to see, you know, he's played um, in reserve roles and, and not as much of a, a, the big time moment. So I think for people like us, there's still some questions of, of his durability um, and how he's, you know, if he's fully all the way back from, from what was a pretty big injury. So those are the three scholarship guys they have right now. Last one for me. I know we talked about when we opened this up and, and you mentioned uh, the, the CBS primetime game, the hype. I know this was a game that was getting like $400 on uh, secondhand markets before the game even started at the sellout. And then A&M comes in with two losses. What is kind of the vibe amongst Alabama's fan base, amongst the, the, the team going into this game that was going to be the, the game of the season and now seems to really have lost all, all luster? Yeah, I I'd be lying if I said there. I heard a whole lot of buzz around this game. Um, I think what made Ole Miss such an interesting and potentially scary game for Alabama was their dynamic offense that could do just about anything. Um, could you know does they did all the things that make Nick Saban defenses nervous, and it doesn't seem like A and M with a, a new quarterback. They're not putting up the kind of numbers, obviously that. Um, if it were to be, you know, Alabama hasn't lost too many close, low scoring games. If they lose games are usually shootouts and um, it, this would be hard pressed to see as a shootout kind of a scenario. So I guess that would be maybe the mindset. Hey, what's the difference of now you got five games. What's the difference of a Bill O'Brien get called game and offensive coordinator since, you know, he was at the Texans and a lot of Aggies, you know, who are also, Pro football fans followed him. So is there much difference? What are we going to see difference with him calling the games, you know, previous? Yeah, I mean, it's always a combination of who the coordinator is and kind of who the personnel is, that the personnel on the field is so vastly different from the guys that you saw last year and the year before that it's, you know, it's a little bit of all that combined into one that, you know, they, they have a, a more dynamic quarterback. They can do more in the running game. Um, with him, not that he runs it often, but th there's there are more possibilities. They haven't seen much of the read option um, from Bryce Young, but you know it's a possibility. Um, then, as opposed to you know a pro style straight drop back passer like Mac Jones was last year, so you know I'd be more curious to see if if Bill O'Brien took over with the same start, the same kind of players, the same offense that they had a year ago to see more of an apples to apples because it's just you knew it was going to be different regardless of who the, the OC was going to be, just knowing how many different players are going to be in there as opposed to in 2020. 
And another thing, Michael, I mean, obviously from a and side, uh, they're, they're, they've, miss, they've had injury problems, not only a quarterback, but they've lost some other guys. And, you know, we like to think, you know, journalists looking, well, that's football. You're going to get guys hurt. Now, you mentioned about the running backs. What about the rest of Alabama's team as far as injuries concerned? Have they been pretty, uh, you know, healthy this, this year or they have other guys missing as well? What about their injury report? Um, yeah, I, the first game, they pretty much had him with that, been without him all year. Chris Allen was one of their starting outside linebackers. Um, he went down in the first game against Miami, so they've they've pretty much been without him the whole year. Drew Sanders, uh, a Texas guy, is uh, taking over for him, opposite of Will Anderson. Um, so, and he's I think he's done pretty a pretty good job, not as experienced as uh, Allen was, but um, done pretty uh, pretty good job. Um, there really aren't too many other I'm trying to think through right now. Any major injuries were, you know, interesting. So they've been pretty pretty healthy. You can stop and consider if you know you lose like a couple guys, your main. Yeah, there've been a couple banged up. A couple guys have missed a few games, but nothing um, off the top of my head that I could think of where there's a major. Um, other, you know, McClellan's a pretty big, pretty big. Sure. Player. Okay. Yeah. So so spread is I believe seventeen point five. We'll just go with the prediction of, do you think uh, A&M covers the spread or do you think this is another one where Alabama runs away with it? Yeah, I think I, I, had, I had a pick it this morning. I think, I think I had Alabama covering the spread. I just didn't see A&M scoring enough points than and Alabama would, you know, A&M obviously has a good defense, but I think Alabama will probably get a, a little bit above that number, but you know, I'm wrong about this stuff all the time. <laughs> yeah, we all are. We all are. Trust yes, me. Yes, we are. So I think, uh, uh, 60 to 59 last week was my pick for Alabama. <laughs> so I was way off. So uh, before we close up, uh, let everyone know uh, where they can find you, get a hold of you, find your stuff, read, get pre- uh, prepped up for the game this weekend. Yeah, al.com is uh, the home of all of our, all of our Alabama coverage. Um, I think it's backslash Alabama football. Um, we'll get you to everything. We're on Twitter, Facebook, all of the the normal um, channels and streams. You can find us. Um, plenty of stuff coming up this week. The rest of the week, and uh, we'll be up there. We'll be down there in College Station on Saturday night. Sounds you good. You guys, you guys do a good job, Michael. Does 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 Nick get on you guys and tell you guys what to do? And is that why you guys, are, you know, <laughs> put <some laughs> stuff out there? <laughs> I appreciate it. No, anything we do is in spite of. Of Nick and, and Matt. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah. yeah, no. Thankful he's not our editor. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate the time, and uh, be sure to go check out some of Michael's stuff uh, leading up to the game this week.